She was last seen walking her at 9.15 a.m. She was last seen walking her small brown dog on the towpath of the river wire. Uh, the dog was found about an hour later, as was her mobile phone. So her family are very concerned, as are we. We've mounted a really um, intensive operation to try and find Nicola, including a number of specialist officers from our Northwest Underwater Regional Search Unit and uh, specialist investigators who are supporting the family, as well as a lot of partners like Boland Mountain Rescue, Lancashire Fire and Rescue and others, uh, and the Coast Guard. We thank them very much, uh, as well as local people who've turned out in force who were obviously equally concerned for Nicola. And we appeal for anyone who may have been driving through the village of St. Michael's last Friday morning at about 9.15, or who may have dash cam footage that could be of use to us, or people who may have been dog walking in the area or on the towpath to come forward. They can ring 101, or if they have a sighting of Nicola, 999. Thank you, happy to take questions. Do you know if you know Nicola was driving? Are you looking for a vehicle at all? Like when she did, you know, got to this area? No, Nicola was last seen on foot. Right. Uh, is described for those who were in the area as slight build, five foot three inches tall. She was wearing a black gilet jacket, dark trousers and short uh, green wellies. Where was your mobile phone? Mobile phone was found on a bench near the riverbank. No, the dog was loose and the dog was between the river and the bench. Are you searching any other areas apart from obviously near the, the footpath and the riverbanks? Is there any other areas in this, near the local vicinity that you're checking? Or? We've searched an extensive area along the riverbank out of St Michael's so that we've been really thorough and you can probably hear the helicopter in the distance that has been up and about since Nicola went missing on Friday. Nowhere outside, Nowhere outside of this um, this area, yes, this locality. What kind of things have you been using in search, like, have you said, the airplane, helicopter? Yeah, we've been using our police helicopter, our regional helicopter. We've been using underwater search officers. We've got specialist search advisors who've been advising on the area to physically search. We've got a number of officers out on the ground physically searching uh, this rural area, and of course, the members of the public have been helping as well. Was the what? Well, the police keeping a really open mind about what could have happened, but we do believe that um, that the likelihood is that Nicola's gone missing, and this is not a crime inquiry. But we are keeping an open mind. worrying for them that it may cause anxiety however what i would say is that there is an enormous <laughs> nicola went missing on friday the 27th of january she was last seen at 9 10 in the upper field of the riverside area and she was with her dog her phone and her dog were found at around 9.33 that morning and Nicola has not been seen since. Now I can understand that for local people this is extremely distressing and, uh, and worrying for them that it may cause anxiety. However, what I would say is that there is an enormous police investigation into this missing person inquiry. Around 40 detectives are working under a senior investigating officer, looking at every possible line of inquiry, including CCTV, house to house, tracing witnesses, looking at around 700 uh, vehicles that have passed through the village that day, tracing all of those witnesses and trying to get dash cam footage. In addition to that, around half a dozen police divers continue to search the river, but were also aided in that search by a number of partners. Um, like Fire and Rescue and the Lancaster Area Search and Rescue team, to whom I'm very grateful. So to the local community, I would say, please, if you have dash cam footage relating to that journey on Friday the 27th, get in touch. We have a new email inbox, Nicola Bully Investigation at lancashire.police.uk, and all information will be taken seriously and looked into. I was just going to ask you, I mean, you remain as confident as ever uh, that there is no third party. 
party involvement in this case at all? I do, Terry, yeah, because yeah. our investigation has um, looked at so many potential lines of inquiry, particularly the CCTV uh, bordering that stretch of river. Now, Allotment Lane and Rowan Water Caravan Park have been discounted as areas that Nicola could have used to leave the path. That only leaves us Garstang Lane. Now, of course, we remain fully open to anything that may have happened to her and any information is being checked out. But at this time, our belief is that this is a missing person inquiry. So the third party uh, involvement that's suggested by the, uh, the boss of SGI uh, mentioned about the phone possibly being left on the bench as a decoy, that, that's something that isn't really relevant to the inquiry or is that a, a, a factor? In well, any way. Nicola's phone was found on the bench, but yeah. there could be so many explanations for that. Nicola may have left it momentarily, particularly as she was on a Teams call from 9.01 that morning until the Teams call ended, albeit yeah. she remained dialed in at 9.30. She could have left the phone on the bench to go and deal with uh, something involving the dog. It does not mean anything suspicious in itself. And the fact that other witnesses have not seen anyone suspicious in the area and that we haven't picked up anyone suspicious either on our systems or on CCTV does lead us to believe it remains a missing person in crime. You mentioned there are 40 detectives working on, on the case specifically. What about the number in general with uniform officers and experts, uh, searchers and everything like that? Is, well, there, is there a number on, on total it, it's officers? It's around 60. It's yeah. around 60 because there are many... Uh, neighbourhood policing officers, uh, including the police officers themselves and the PCSOs who remain in the area. Yes. There are a number of supervisors who come down to the scene. There are obviously the police divers and the searchers of the uh, the physical search area of the riverbank, so uh, about 60 in total. But if we need more, we will call upon them. At the moment, the senior investigating officer is happy with those number of inquiries, but we'll keep it under constant review. Do you mind me just asking two more questions? Uh, the, uh, the area around the bench wasn't kind of isolated and uh, protected at first. Uh, I mean, is that uh, something that is regretted at all or was that the right thing to do at the time? Well, this is a beautiful rural area, yeah. isn't it? And to um, be able to fence off every hazard mm. would be practically impossible for an area that people come to on their holidays. Yeah. They walk their dogs, they enjoy leisure time, local people. Yeah. So I think that would be a very difficult task, not one for the police, certainly for the local authority, but I think one that would be difficult to do and may detract from the beauty of the area. So no evidence would have been lost by it not being uh, uh, isolated or, or sealed off? Earlier. Oh, you're talking a police cordon. Yeah, sorry, indeed. I thought a you meant a physical cordon. cordon. Yeah. Right, yes. sorry. Yeah. Well, um, the police officers were alerted after that first call about 10.50 when yeah. the school and her family were, were told that um, her phone yes. and her dog had been found. Yeah. Police officers were very quickly on the scene afterwards. Yes. Um, in that short window, I'm not concerned, um, having been led by the inquiry team to this view, that anything would have been lost in that short time. And, and do you know how long SGI are uh, going to be on site and how near they are? Uh, that is a matter for them. That's for them, yeah, Indeed. yes. Thanks.